Hello and welcome back. Now today's video I'm going to be showing you something a little bit different. I'm going to be showing you a few things that you can use yourself on your own vehicles. Now this can be used a variety of ways. One is restoring old aluminum and stainless parts. Another way this can help you is if you're doing new custom parts this may help you on learning how to do the finish you want. And hopefully, it'll help all of you out. Now, I'll show you something real quick. Because I've been doing finishing work for years. I learned how to mirror finish a long time ago. I learned you can mirror finish aluminum stainless fairly easy if you know what you're doing. Now, if you take your time, you can do some really nice work. Now as you can see, we have here just a plain piece of stainless. Now this is one of my older pieces I use just as a mirror now. That way I don't drop it and I don't have to worry about it breaking. But as you can see, how shiny that looks. Now, I'm going to be showing you real quick how to do that. It's almost pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to show you real quick in the video and then I'll talk about it a little bit more. Now we can use smaller scale tools. As you can see, pretty well scuffed up. And that's a piece of stainless. Now, there's a piece of aluminum. Now, we can apply these to smaller pieces such as trim on your car or if you're trying to make a custom piece and you want a good finish. But what we're going to do is use our rapid finish wheel on our 7 inch grinder and we're going to use that to smooth it out. Now you can use the smaller profiles such as something like this or this to get the scratches and blemishes out. But I'm going to use this and we're going to go in different directions.
the same thing. We're going to go in different directions, crisscrossing it. reflection this one still has a little bit of waves still need to be buffed a little bit more kind of gives you an ideal that you can do this on some kind of custom materials you're wanting to use for your car or truck now the next finish is what we call a squirrel finish now obviously this is popular in the 70s, Trans Ams and all that with the dash. Now it's a relatively easy thing to do. You can take a pad like this, kind of like a scotch Brite pad. Now for it, it is pretty simple. And what we're going to do, take this piece of aluminum here, and we're going to start, let's start on this square spot. That's probably what most people are doing. Now you can do different sizes and everything depending on the pad you got. And we kind of start with an overhang overlap. Put pressure down. Overlap. And now here we kind of do more of a overhang off the edge. Overlap. And repeat. Kind of overlapping each one by hand. And now you can see what we have. Now depending on the grid, size, and material you use, it comes out a little bit different. But that's kind of a soft, small grit, so one inch pad.
to get this finished, you could use a bench grinder, or if you don't have a bench grinder, you use the same tools I did, such as this. And for the inside, I use this little angle grinder, the buffing wheel on it. I use green buffing rouge because I, for me, it gets a better, better finish, as you can see. And with the larger Dewalt grinder and a harder pad, it tends to clean and take off a lot of stuff really quick and even smooths the edge a little bit. Now, needless to say, you don't necessarily have to use the tools that I've used. Now, I've grown accustomed to using these tools because I've been using them for years doing this kind of work. And I just kind of want to show you really quick examples. Now, if you take your time, you can get a really good finish, even doing it your first time. Now, we'll discuss the mirror finishing, as I call it. Now the rapid finish wheel is one of the key things to this because it can remove grain and metal as well as scratches and prepare it for the final buffing. Now as you saw you'll want to kind of crisscross your direction on it and remove everything you can from it to get the best shine you can. And you see it works on aluminum and stainless. Now the buffing wheel so now I can pick up a hardware store, the rapid finish I can pick up at a local welding shop. The buffing rouge I pick up at a local industrial abrasive supply. And when finishing it, make sure you don't get your metal too hot because it will warp, pit, or dimple. Sometimes you can put a block of aluminum under what you're working on depending on how big it is. It'll pull some of the heat out loud and you work a little bit longer, but take your time on it. Now, like I said, the rapid finish wheel, you kind of crisscross. Same thing with the buffing wheel, if you saw. Applying good amounts of the green buffing rouge and crisscrossing it. That way, you get the proper finish you want. And really, just keep going until you get the finish you want. Now, as you saw, you could use the buffing wheel with the green rouge to go over old trim and well like the headlight bezel and that old trim now those weren't in the best of shape there's just some extras I had laying around but you saw what it did to it so you can literally take your old trim off of your vehicle like the front trim on this truck I could take it off buff it out real quick and it'd be shiny and almost like chrome fairly quick now you can also use a bench grinder for that but as for the mirror finishing, if you're doing a larger size piece, I prefer to use the big grinder because it works a little bit easier. The buffing on a bench grinder, it will take a lot longer. And sometimes turning that piece, you just don't have the room. Using the handheld grinder, it will get you a little bit more room. Now, you don't have to use that big of a grinder either. But just be careful because the bigger grinder if you catch an edge it will throw what you're working on or jerk the tool out of your hands so be careful there and the swirl finish that's pretty easy self-explanatory but if you have something that's 
kind of rough, scratched up, or has some rough grain in it, you could use a rapid finish wheel to smooth it off first and then apply a penny of pressure and do the swirl polish. Now I hope this information helped you out in any projects you're working on or future projects you've been thinking about working on. Now if it helped you out, go ahead and hit the like button. And you're not subscribed, go ahead and feel free to subscribe because you never know what other helpful tips that I may bring around or what other projects that I may be working on that could help you out in the future too. And as always, thanks for watching.